Good afternoon. This is Ganghua from Warmpex AI Research. Today, I'm going to discuss how computer vision can help drive revenue growth in brick and mortar convenience stores. A little information about Warmpex AI Research. We are the research branch of Bian Ni Feng, a newly established, fast growing convenience store chain in China. Our research team are located both in Belleville in the Greater Seattle area and also in Beijing, China. To date, our company owns over a thousand stores across different cities in China. We also have our own warehouses and even manufacturers. Our business has been growing really fast. To give you a sense, the first year, 2017, when we first became into operation, we opened up a total of 200 stores. In the second year, 2018, we added another 600 stores on top of it. In the third year, 2019, we added another 1,000 stores into our list. And this year, marking the fourth year of our business. Our year-end plan is to add another 2,500 stores into our current stores. With our business growing at this scale, there is a strong and urgent request for us to fully digitize the operation decision in our storefronts. This is because if we continue relying on human to make the best decisions, we wouldn't be able to find sufficient number of qualified storefront managers to run our store. In the past 10 years, we have observed the tremendous business growth powered by the internet. And why this happens? The answer is actually quite simple. The internet forms a digital world and all information are in digital form. This greatly facilitates algorithm-driven digital decisions to be made. And all the transactions and operations are confined to the digital world. However, if we try to digitize the operation decision of our brick and mortar convenience stores, the first barrier we would encounter is that all information actually resides in the physical world in our storefronts. Therefore, in order to fully embrace digital decision, we need to first digitize all information in our storefronts. Then we may factor the digital decisions back to the physical operations in our storefronts. These three steps roughly correspond to the perception, the cognition, and the manipulation part of an AI system. Therefore, we can actually view our storefront operation process as a robotic system, and more precisely, a co-robotic system as human it's still involved in the operation process, especially in the manipulation part. We believe that computer vision will play a vital role in the digitization process. Then decisions will be made by mathematical decision models from operations research in retail. If we want to really more aggressively facilitate the physical operations, we need to look into te technologies from electromechanics, but this won't be the focus of this talk. We are going to use a case study to showcase how we can fulfill this cycle to drive revenue growth in our storefront operations. Therefore, the rest of my talk will be divided into three parts the digitization, decision, and the execution or physical operation parts. This cycle is centered around a decision model we build on assortment planning and shelf space allocation. Let's first look into the digitization parts, where we want to create a digital twin of our storefronts, which captures the whole store information of products and the shelf space usage. The first step of our 
digitization process is to run a robot equipped with a 360 degree camera to navigate through every single color of our storefront and capture all information into a single 360 degree video. Once we get the 360 degree video, we can run structure from motion to reconstruct the full 3D environment of the whole store. Simultaneously, we can also run a deep learning based 60OF 3D shelf detector. This way, we can detect each single shelf in our store and estimate its 3D pose. Up to this point, we have created the digital twin for each shelf in our store at the whole shelf level. Next, we are going to move inside the shelf, capturing more detailed information about the products and the shelf space usage. This is achieved through the images taken from three product imaging cameras mounted in the robots in a vertical bar. Because we have already obtained the 3D reconstruction of the whole store, we can use this 3D environment to simulate the optimal robot position and pose to capture the best view for each shelf front. Here is a visualization of the best view and orientation of the uh, shelf front where we should take the image. Give you a sense how the images look like. Here we show two examples where the images are taken from the optimal positions we simulated and obtained from the 3D environments. Once we obtain the images from the product imaging cameras on the robots, we first run a deep learning based category independent product detectors and try to detect all the products in, on the shelf along with the empty spaces. Here are more examples even from shelves in the refrigerators. This page shows a larger example of the products we detected from the shelf. After we run the category independent product detection, we crop each detection out and run it through a retrieval based product recognition system. In our design, we separate the detection from the recognition process for scalability consideration. This way, when we expand to new product categories, we only need to index related product images into our recognition system and largely relieving us from retraining the detector. Here, we show another recognition result from our recognition system. As we can see, the query image actually does not provide much information. But because we indexed an image of similar views of the same product in our image, we are still able to correctly recognize that this product is actually a delicious dish. After we run it through this detection and recognition process, we are able to create the digital twin inside the shelf where we not only know what products are showing there, but also know how these products are arranged, along with whether the shelf still has empty space or not. All this 
look good. But how could this help increase sales revenue? In order to answer this question, we need to divert from computer vision a little bit. So next, we're going to talk about our decision models for assortment planning and shelf space allocation. If we compare a brick and mortar store with an online store, the difference is quite obvious. The physical store is limited by its space. As a result, the number of SKUs you can display in your shelf is quite limited. Versus in the online store, I can literally create an unlimited number of web pages to display the SKUs I offer. Therefore, the problem we want to address here is how can we most efficiently allocate spaces to different product SKUs such that we can maximize the sales revenue. This is addressed by a mathematical model for assortment planning and facing assignment. In order to establish such a mathematical model, let's first take a look of what would happen if a customer comes to a store. There could be three major cases. In the first case, the customer knows exactly what he or she wants to buy and the product is also available. In this case, the customer would buy the product and the sale is fulfilled. In the second case, the customer still knows what exactly he or she wants to buy, but the product is not available. In this case, the customer would buy a substitution or we could lose the sale. In the third case, the customer does not really know what he or she exactly wants to buy, but just want to take a look around the store. In this case, he or she would either buy something or would buy nothing. This understanding of customer behaviors helps us to establish an exogenous demand model. In this model, customer demands of a product SKUI could be divided into three terms. The first term is the initial demand, where DI mean is the base demand of product SKUI and KI is the facing number assigned to it. It has long been observed in the retail industry. If you assign more facings of a product in the shelf, then the customer demand of this product would naturally increase, and the magnitude of this increase is decided by a parameter called space elasticity. The second and uh, third components are called out-of-assortment and out-of-stock substitution respectively. They represent the demand of product SKUI induced by substitution by, but for different reasons. The parameter is called out of assortment substitute rate, out of stock substitution rate, and H represents the hidden true demand. The parameters in this demand model could be estimated by nonlinear least square given historically observed demands and facing numbers from sales data. This is actually where computer vision can provide the most accurate information to estimate these parameters. For example, the product display map estimated from our computer vision system can actually be serving as a very good information source to fit in this model. Once we obtain our demand model, we can easily establish a mixed integer program to optimize for the sales revenue or sales profit. This is achieved by assigning the optimal facing numbers to each product. In our optimization problem, pi i is the selling price, and the capital Ki is the capital facing we can assign to a specific product. And the lowercase wi is the physical width of the product, and the capital Wi is the cap of the shelf width we can assign for a specific product. The last constraint in our optimization problem ensures us to assign the facings to our um, product units within the total sh shelf space available to us. 
In our optimization problem, if we assign zero facing to a product SKU, it essentially means that this product is not selected in our assortment. This way, we achieve joint optimization of the assortment and the facing assignment. With this model, after we have done the optimization, we can create a unique planogram for each of our thousand stores and ask the storefront managers to arrange the products in the desired fashion. However, this looks so far so good. But will the storefront managers do exactly what we asked them to do? Indeed, offline execution is often a challenge in running a brick and mortar store. So how do we ensure the quality of the offline execution in our stores? Because we have a robot running in our store. After the storefront manager placed all the products in the shelf, we would run the robot again and capture a current snapshot of the product display in our shelf. Then we would compare this with the assigned planogram. For any inconsistency we detected, we would send a working order to the storefront managers to fix. And if they don't finish the fix in the required amount of time, there will be some punishment to them. Here is another example on the inconsistencies we detected. So what's the business outcome here? By executing this full loop, our in-store A-B test incurred about 5 to 10% GMV increase on tested SKU categories. So what's the role of computer vision in this case study? On one hand, computer vision provides more accurate information about actual product facing to drive the assortment and the facing assignment model. On the other hand, it also ensures the storefront managers to execute the planogram in the designed fashion. In the next several slides, I will quickly flip through several other applications of computer vision and hopefully to strengthen you the notion of this digitization, decision, and execution cycle. In the first demo, our computer vision system automatically detects customers coming into our store and play a song to grade them. The second demo I want to show here is what we call the intelligent reminder. We have very strict SOPs for to guide the storefront managers to run our store. For example, in the case here, when the customers finished eating and left all the garbage in the tabletop, we asked the storefront manager actually to finish the cleaning in five minutes. In this case, our computer vision system detected such things happened and would inform the storefront manager to finish it up. Are more cases we are checking, for example, the garbage can is full or uh, there's garbage on the ground, which is forbidden, and so on and so forth. We are currently using computer vision system to check about uh, 50 different uh, events happening in our store and send reminders to the storefront managers. Here is another example. We are actually using our computer vision system to monitor mouses in our store. Whenever we detect such events, we need, we need to shut down the whole store and uh, uh, do a total cleaning to kill all the mouses before we reopen the store. We have also built a computer vision based system to detect the people who are stealing from our store. 
In this case, we have built a machine which can automatically、uh, put the cover into the large box, where we also use computer vision to recognize what the、uh, customer has ordered and、uh, automatically print out a 2D barcode for them to make the payment. In conclusion. The broader role of computer vision in brick and mortar retail, including first capturing more accurate information about the status of the store, including product shelves and customers. Second, it can be used to ensure the quality and service consistency of the storefront operations. And last but not least, it could play very important role in anti-theft, which. Induces very big loss for the whole retail industry. This concludes my talk. Thank you very much. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have.